Hey everyone, welcome to part 39 of my Pokemon game series in Unity. So in this video, we'll let the player forget a move if the Pokemon has 4 moves and wants to learn a new one. So for example, Charmander has 4 moves right now. And if I level up to level 13, then he's trying to learn Flamethrower, but since he has 4 moves, he'll have to forget one of his moves in order to learn the new one all right so we can select the move to forget from here so flamethrower is a new move and if we select flamethrower itself then charmander will not learn the new move but if we select one of its existing moves then it will forget that move and learn flamethrower so if i select growl then it will forget growl and learn flamethrower all right and now if we start another battle the charmander no longer has growl and instead it has the flamethrower so we look at how to implement that in this video special thanks to all my patreons for making the series possible by becoming a patreon you can support me in the making of the series and get access to some cool rewards like the complete project files of the series which also contains some advanced features that are not covered here. So let's start the video. So in the previous video, we made the Pokemon learn new moves when it reached certain levels. But if the Pokemon already has four moves, then right now we are not doing anything. So what we have to do is we have to let the player forget a move so that he can make space for the new move. So first let's create a UI that will let the player select a move to forget. So let me go to Unity and let me enable the battle system. Okay. So I just want to make a small box that will list the current moves of the player Pokemon and the new move that it wants to learn. So inside my battle canvas, I'll create a new image. Okay, and let me rename this image to move selection UI. All right, and for the image, I'll choose the image of a dialog box itself. Okay, and I'll change its width and height to 250 by 300. All right, that looks okay to me. So let me just reposition this. So next I'll create the text fields to display the move names. So I'll add a new text. All right, I'll just call this move text. And I'll change the font to orange kit. I'll make the font size 40. And let me just change the text to move. Okay, and let me make this big so that it's visible. Next, I want to align the text to the center, both vertically and horizontally. Okay. So let me just place this text over here. And we need to create four more copies of them. So I'll use Control D to duplicate and create four more copies. So totally there are five more text. So next I want to align these text vertically one after the other. So you can do that manually by dragging each text. But a better way to do that is to use the vertical layout group. So I'll add a vertical layout group to the move selection UI. Okay. So now you can see that all our move text are automatically aligned so in the settings of the vertical layout group I'll change the child alignment to middle center so that everything is centered and I don't want so much spacing between each moves so let me just reduce the spacing let's say something like minus 20 so that's it for the move selection UI I just want to go with this simple UI but if you want, 
you can make it big and show things like the power and maximum PP of the move and all that. So next, let's create a script for the move selection UI. So inside my scripts folder, inside battle, I'll create a new script called move selection UI. And inside the script, we need references to the list of move text. So I'll create a variable for that. So we have to import you know, dengine.ui in order to use text. Okay, and I'll name this variable move text. So next, I'll create a public function to set the move names to these texts. So I'll call the function set move data. So this function will take the list of current moves the Pokemon has. So I'll call it current moves. And it will also take a reference to the new move. All right. This is because we have to show both the current moves and the new move in the move selection UI. So first, I'll set the names of the current moves. So for that, I'll loop through the current moves list using a for loop. Okay, and inside the for loop, I'll say move text of i dot text equal to the name of the current move, right? So to get the current move, I'll say current moves of i dot name. All right, so this loop will set the name of the current moves to this list. So next, I'll set the name of the new move. So this for loop will run from zero to current moves count minus one. Okay, so it'll set the text of all the move text from the index zero to current moves count minus one. So the next index that we have to use is current moves dot count. So I'll say move text of current moves dot count and I'll set the text of this to the name of the new move. All right. So we're done setting the move names. So let's go to Unity and let's add the script to our move selection UI game object. Okay. And we need to assign all these move text to the list. So let me just lock this inspector in order to assign it. Okay, so that's assigned. So next, let's go to our battle system script. And if the player Pokemon already has four moves, then we have to show the move selection UI and let the player select a move to forget. So what I'll do is, I'll create a new state called move to forget. All right, and just like for all the other states, I'll create a function to start that state so I'll create a new function called choose move to forget and this function will take a reference of the player Pokemon and it will also take a reference of the new move. So at the start of the function, I'll set the state to busy so that nothing else will happen. And then I'll show a dialog that says choose a move that you want to forget. And after that, we need to enable the move selection UI, right? So for that, I need a reference to the move selection UI. So let me create a reference here. Okay, and we can go to Unity 
and assign the reference so I'll just assign the move selection UI game object to the variable in the balance system script and now inside our choose move to forget function we can enable the move selection UI so I'll say move selection UI dot game object dot set active true all right so by default the move selection UI should be disabled and when we go to the state then we'll enable it so next after enabling it we have to set the move names to the move selection UI so for that we can use the set move data function that we just created earlier so this function first we have to pass the current move of the Pokemon so I can get that from pokemon.moves but one problem is pokemon.moves is a list of move class all right and it's not a list of move base class but in our set move data function we are expecting a list of move base class so to get a reference of move base it's actually pretty simple we just have to say move dot base right we can just do this if we want to get the move base from the move class but what can we do for a list of moves we'll have to call the dot base property for all the moves in the list right we can't simply say moves of zero dot base we'll have to do that for all the moves in the list so how can we do that so there is actually a simple way to achieve this using link so what we can do is we can say moves dot select okay we'll have to import link in order to use the select function so inside select we can say x arrow x dot base and after the select we have to call dot to list in order to convert it into a list so basically what this will do is this will convert a list of move class into a list of move base class so if this sounds confusing to you i recommend spending some time to learn the basics of link so let's continue so we passed the first parameter which is the current moves of the player Pokemon. So the second parameter is the new move, which we can just pass directly. All right. So this line will set all the move names in the move selection UI. So once we show the move selection UI and set the move names, we can set our state to move to forget state. All right. So now let's actually call this function when the player Pokemon is trying to learn a new move, but it already has four moves. So here, I'll remove this to-do command and I'll call choose move to forget coroutine. Okay. So here we have to pass the player Pokemon and the new move it's trying to learn okay so this new move is actually an instance of learnable move class so we have to use new move dot base since we are expecting move base as the second parameter and by the way before calling this function I want to show a few dialogues so first I'll show a dialog like the Pokemon is trying to learn this move but it cannot learn more than four moves so here instead of four I'll use Pokemon base dot max number of moves 
just in case you might want five or six moves as the max in your game. So let's go to Unity and test this. So let me just disable the battle system. And let me look at the moves of my Charmander. So let me just add one more move at level 7. So that my Charmander will have 4 moves by default. So let me just add a quick attack. And I'll set its level to 7. And just to make things easy to test, I'll increase the XP yield of Bulbasaur even further. I'll make it 400. So beating a Bulbasaur will produce more XP gain and we'll be able to level up just by beating one Bulbasaur. So let's try testing this. Alright, so currently my Charmander has 4 moves and when it levels up to level 13, it'll try to learn Flamethrower. So let's see what will happen. So let me try to beat this Bulbasaur real quick. Alright, so the Bulbasaur fainted and Charmander should gain enough XP to level up. Alright, it grew to level 13 and now you can see it's trying to learn Flamethrower but it can't learn more than 4 moves. So we have to choose a move to forget. So we are successfully showing the move selection UI. So next, we should let the player select a move from the UI and then forget that move in order to learn the new move. So let's do that. So in the handle update function, if the state is move to forget, then we should call a function to handle the selection of the moves. All right. We should create a function like this in order to handle the move selection. We already have a function for handling move selection. So this function is used to select the move to use in the battle. And in this case, the move is arranged as a grid, not as a vertical list. So we can't use this function. We'll have to create another one. So what I'll do is I'll create the handle move selection inside the move selection UI script. The battle system script already has lots of different logic inside it. So it's better to encapsulate logic into other scripts. So inside my move selection UI script, I'll create a public function called handle move selection. And I'll create an integer variable for the current selection. All right, and initially I'll set it to zero. So next, inside the function, if the down arrow key is selected, then we can increment the current selection. All right, and otherwise we can decrement it. So next we have to clamp the selection between 0 and the maximum number of moves. So I'll just use mathlift.clamp for that. And I'll clamp it between 0 and the maximum number of moves, which I can get from Pokemon base dot max number of moves. Alright, so next we have to update the move selection in the UI. So for that I'll create another public function call update move selection and this function will take the current selection as a parameter and inside it I'll use a for loop to loop through all the move text so here the loop should be between 0 and the maximum number of moves plus 1 so all this is pretty similar to what we have done for the move selection and action selection earlier. So that's the reason why I'm not, I'm not explaining this in depth. So here inside the for loop, if i is equal to 
the selection then we want to highlight that move text right so for that I'll create a variable called highlight color and I'll set the color of the move text to the highlight color all right and otherwise I'll just set the color to black so now from the handle move selection we can call the update move selection function and pass the current selection as the parameter so now let's call this function so inside the handle update if the state is moved forget then we can call move selection UI dot handle move selection so this will let the user select different moves from the moves list but one thing we have to handle is right now after going to the move to forget state we'll go down and we'll end the battle since the Pokemon actually fainted so we should not end the battle until the player selects a new move so to do that below this I'll call a wait until coroutine and inside this I'll say I want to wait until the state changes from the move to forget state. Okay. So we will wait until the player selects a move. And only after that, we will end the battle. So let's try testing this. So before we test, we need to set the highlighted color from the inspector. So let me change it to something like blue and I need to change the alpha so that it will be visible. All right. So let me test if it's working. So yeah, once the charm handle level up, it will try to learn a new move. And our move selection UI is shown but I'm not able to select different moves using the down and up arrow keys so let's check what the issue is so yeah here is the issue in the handle move selection I'm incrementing the current selection if the down arrow key is pressed and otherwise I'm decrementing it so whenever down arrow key is not pressed the selection will keep decrementing and that's why it's not changing in the UI so instead we should actually add a condition here saying else if up arrow key is pressed only then we should decrement the current selection okay so this should solve that issue and Another issue that I noticed is the flamethrower is not fully shown. So to test that, we can pause this and then we can try resizing this text to see if that comes. So yeah, here you can see if I make the text big and then unpause the game, the flamethrower is being shown. So what we have to do is we have to increase the size of all the text in our move selection UI. So let's do that. Okay. I believe that should be enough. And just to test it, we can try changing the text of this. So yeah, that's fitting. And in case if it's not fitting, then you can reduce the font size. So I'll just change this back 
and I'll disable the move selection UI disable the battle system and try to test the game again so now you can see that flamethrower is being shown and I'm also able to select different moves by using my up and down arrow keys so that's working fine so next when the player selects a move and presses Z, the Pokemon should forget that move and learn the new move, right? So let's look at how to do that. So inside our handle move selection function, if the user presses the Z key, then we should forget the selected move, learn the new move, show dialogues and go back to the running turn state but the problem is we can only do all those from the battle system script right we don't have reference to the player unit dialog box battle state and all that inside the move selection UI script so how can we solve this problem so what we can do is in this function we can take an action as the parameter so let me import system in order to use action and i'll call this action on selected and it will take an integer as the parameter so this action will be invoked whenever a move is selected and we will pass our current selection to the integer parameter all right so let's invoke this action so I'll say on selected dot invoke and for the parameter I'll pass the current selection. So next let's create this action from the battle system script. So inside the handle update we also have to pass the action when calling handle move selection. Right? So let's define the action here. So in the parameter of the action, we'll get the index of the selected move. Okay. So here also we have to add the integer to show that this action takes a parameter. So now let's implement this action. So first of all, when a move is selected, we have to disable the move selection UI, right? So I'll say move selection UI dot game object dot set active false. All right. So next, we have to make the Pokemon forget the selected move, right? But what if the player selects a new move itself? So let's say the flamethrower is a new move that the Pokemon can learn. And what if the player selects flamethrower itself? So in that case, the Pokemon should not learn flamethrower and it should keep all its existing moves. So there are two cases that we need to handle. So the first one is if the move index is equal to equal to 4 is going to be the index of new move so instead of writing 4 I'll write Pokemon base dot max number of moves just to keep it clean and if that's the case then the Pokemon should not learn the new move right so let me write a comment over here and otherwise Pokemon should forget the selected move and learn the new move so in this case we don't have to do anything all we have to do is show a dialog saying the Pokemon did not learn the new move so one problem is we don't have reference to the new move from here all right we have a reference of the new move in the choose move to forget function 
so this is a new move but we don't have a reference to it in the handle update function right so what I'll do is I'll create a local variable called move to learn and in the choose move to forget function I'll store the reference of new move into the variable we created all right so now we can access it from move to learn variable so in this case I'll just show a dialog saying the Pokemon did not learn the new move all right so this is all we have to do in this case so in the second case we have to replace the selected move with the new move right so I'll say player unit dot Pokemon dot moves of move index so this is the selected move and I'll replace it with our new move okay so I'll assign new move of move to learn all right so here I'm creating an instance of the new move and I'm replacing the selected move with the instance of the new move so even in this case I want to show a dialog so first let me grab a reference to the selected move okay and I just need its base and now I'll show a dialog like the Pokemon forgot the selected move and learned the new move okay so that's all we have to do and after this condition I'll reset the move to learn to null and I'll also set the state back to running turn so that we can continue the battle all right so this is all we have to do when a move is selected so let's pass this action to our handle move selection function all right so now you can see the error is gone so the handle move selection function does not know about what needs to be done when a move is selected and all it has to do is invoke the provided action when a move is selected alright so this is handled in a clean way so here when we set the state to running turn what will happen is in the handle pokemon fainted function we will stop the wait until coroutine so here you can see that it will wait until the move is not equal to move to forget state so when we change the state to the running turn it will stop this wait until coroutine and it will execute the rest of the logic so one more thing I want to add here is after we come back to the running turn state I want to wait for let's say two seconds all right so if we don't do that then the user won't have time to process all this so it's better to wait for two seconds before ending the battle so let's go to unity and test this all right let me start a battle real quick okay and let me beat this Bulbasaur so that I can level up to level 13 all right so now the Charmander is trying to learn flamethrower so we should get our move selection UI 
So let's say I want to forget Growl and learn Flamethrower. So I'll select Growl. So you can see that Charmander forgot Growl and learned Flamethrower. So now if we start another battle, you can see that in our moves list, instead of Growl, we have Flamethrower. Alright, so that's working fine. So I'll stop the video here. If you think these videos are helpful, please leave a like and consider subscribing to the channel. That'll really help me out. So I'll see you in the next video.